Hello everybody, Nathaniel from RC Insight here, and today I am back with a long-awaited Perplexus video. In this video, I am going to be ranking every single Perplexus from the easiest to the hardest. This has been much requested. You guys really enjoyed my last Perplexus ranking video, uh, so thank you so much for all the love on that. If you haven't seen that and you're watching this one, I will leave the link to that other ranking video in the description down below. It is from the worst to the best. In this video, I'm going to be ranking them all from the easiest to the hardest. And just a quick disclaimer, obviously these are just my thoughts and opinions. There are no right or wrong answers to these. Uh, so please do let me know what your rankings are in the comments down below. I'd love to see what you guys think. I'm sure there's some of you who will disagree with where I have put some of these. So I would love to hear your opinions as well. And I think that is enough of an intro. So let's just jump straight into this. And there are actually a couple things that I want to mention just before we start here. The first is that the format of this video is a little different. Now that my studio is done, I'm in here. So let me know what you think. I'm going to be going through the ranking video this way because I think it's just a little bit more engaging with you being able to see my face. Hopefully the lighting's good, but give me some feedback on that. The other thing is that for this video, I'm only ranking 23 perplexuses. My other ranking had 25. I've dropped both the Twisted and the Sidewinder from this ranking because they're both just so different from the rest of the perplexuses that I don't think they really compare in terms of difficulty to everything else because they're a completely different style of puzzle. So with that out of the way, 23 perplexuses are on this list and let's jump straight in to number 23. And coming in at number 23 is the Perplexus Keychain Spiral. Now, I've chosen this one as the easiest Perplexus for a few reasons. It is one of these world's smallest Perplexuses, so I do have some gripes with how the marble moves around the maze, but overall, there's really just like two obstacles here. There's the spiral, and then there's a little traditional butterfly section, and that's it. This is really stripped down from the mini spiral version into the Keychain Spiral version, and I think there's so much removed from here that there's really nothing of note or challenge when playing through this. And that in turn makes it the easiest Perplexus. Now coming in slightly above that at number 22 is the Perplexus Mini Spiral. This is the larger version of the keychain puzzle. And I have it above the keychain simply because there's a few more obstacles of note here. You've got this little uh, thin line section underneath. You've got a couple drop sections in here. Uh, you've got this fun section through here as well. So there's a few different areas. There's a double spiral. I think it's a little easier even to mess up the drop underneath the spiral. There's just a little bit more to this that I think is enough to bump it up. It does have four checkpoints, and so you could definitely argue that that makes it easier. But I think because the other one has no difficult obstacles and that this at least has some, uh, that's why it is at number 22. Coming in at number 21, and I'm sure this is no surprise here, is the Perplexus Mini Cascading Cups. Now, much like the Spiral, this has four checkpoints. It's a closed loop circuit, so there's not even really a start and an end to it. But I think the fact that it includes a cascading cup section, just the nature of the drops that are required, makes it slightly more challenging than the Spiral Puzzle, even though that's really all this is. I also think this butterfly section here is a little bit more unique and challenging again. It's marginally so. This is easily among the easiest possible Perplexus challenges, especially with those four checkpoints. But I do think it inches out slightly more difficult than the Mini Spiral. At number 20, we have the Perplexus Draco. Now, this is a bit of an interesting one because uh, the entire maze is just one long sort of tube section. Uh, and once you get the hang of it, it's not overly difficult, but it does have some interesting elements to the tube section. There's definitely some places where you can uh, fall off. And in some ways it feels like a precursor to the tube section that we have in the new Perplexus portal. It features some of those elements and it's definitely much more advanced than the uh, the tube sections that we get in some of the early perplexuses like the Rookie and the Epic. So I think it has a little bit of challenge in its own right. It's really super short, which is uh, part of why it can't be too much higher. 
but there is some definitely some interesting obstacles that take a little bit of learning to get through for the tube and actually getting to the start if that counts for anything is also rather difficult in this one so i think 20 is a pretty fair spot for it it's really short and sweet but there's a moderate amount of challenge behind it at number 19, we have the Keychain Cascading Cups. Now, unlike the Keychain Spiral, this is actually quite the faithful recreation of the Mini Cascading Cups. I think it has really all the obstacles. It just takes out the stair section and replaces it with flat track, and I think that's a, a net zero difference. But uh, it does add two things that the Mini version does not have. It has a start and an end, and that means there's no checkpoints, which means being identical otherwise, that's obvious, whoa, almost dropped it. That's obviously going to make it a little bit more difficult. And the other thing is just it being small, the marble doesn't move quite as nicely, it doesn't drop quite as nicely. And so that's enough to make this definitely a decidedly more difficult, I'd actually say quite a bit more difficult than the mini cascading cups, though it's still short and sweet and definitely on the easier side. This is arguably, I'd say, the first perplexus that might give you some little bit of a challenge, even if it's a short one. Coming up next at number 18 is the perplexus teeter, the final of the keychain perplexuses. And I had somewhat of a hard time with this ranking. I actually have it underlined because I was so unsure of this positioning. But then I realized this is just my opinion and I should not take this video overly seriously because there's no right or wrong answer to any of this. Um, but the problem with the teeter is there's just one obstacle. So it's actually really short and simple, but the one obstacle is the teeter obstacle, which I actually find rather challenging to navigate. So it's kind of this odd where it's like, there's one obstacle, that's it, and then you're done. But that one obstacle is not the easiest thing ever. Uh, I, I find it can actually be rather difficult and take a lot of tries. This was quite frustrating to get through, but then once you get it, you got it, it's done. So yeah, I wasn't really entirely sure what to do with this one. I think the sheer difficulty of that teeter obstacle is enough to place it above all the other keychain perplexuses, uh, but because of its shortness and nature, uh, it's not enough to move it any higher on the difficulty scale. And at number 17, we have another really interesting one, and that is the perplexus light speed. Now this is another one that I wasn't overly sure what to do with because it's a very, very different perplexus. So different, in fact, that the obstacles here really are not that challenging at all, but it's got that timed mechanic if you know how to play through it and you gotta get to the different colored sections and set off the, the buzzer or the sensors. And so there's a speed element that is involved in this one as well that I do think makes it a little more challenging, especially when you're under that pressure. Uh, additionally, I found out, thanks to a friendly commenter, that there's actually a technical start and end to this, or an official start and end, and it's somewhere around once you've got like 25 or something like that, and it gets insanely fast towards the end. So I don't know that I'll ever beat it that way properly if there's a proper, because there's also like a high score mode. There's different modes for this one. It's, it's, it's just so different. Uh, so if you're actually to like try and play it through and beat it proper, uh, then it's probably really challenging but obviously just going through the course on its own is not particularly difficult. So I've kind of tried to balance the fact that this is more of a scalable difficulty, and that is why it lands at number 17. Coming in at number 16, I have the Perplexus Go Spiral. In my opinion, this is the first Perplexus that really starts to offer a bit of a fun challenge. Uh, it's pretty short, it's one through 30 with no checkpoints, and it's not overly complicated, but it's the first of the perplexuses on this ranking that really have, you know, multiple obstacles and several, you know, more challenging ones that are strung in a row. And so while it's short and still a, more on the easier or introductory side to the perplexus puzzles, there's some drop sections, there's some fun little maneuvers you gotta do here and there, a one-walled section. It's enough that it's it's really like a, a first real perplexus with a series of obstacles to work through. And I think that is enough to put it up at number 16. It's a short but sweet little challenge. 
Then right above that at number 15 is the Perplexus Go Stairs. Now, much like the Spiral, this is a one through 30 maze with no checkpoints. Uh, but what obviously, at least in my opinion, makes it harder than the Spiral is the fact that it is mostly consisting of stair obstacles. And if you know anything about me, you know I hate stair obstacles. I think they are uh, ridiculously hard um, or can be ridiculously hard. I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, and so I'm not a huge fan of this Perplexus overall, though I don't think the stair obstacles are overwhelmingly hard here. It's actually not as difficult as I was expecting when I first got my hands on this. It's definitely still a more of a challenge than the Go Spiral is, but still kind of in that short and sweet introductory category. And so that is why I think it is deserving of number 15. At number 14, I have the Perplexus Revolution Runner. Now, this is another one that's a little bit of a different Perplexus and a little bit harder to rank. Similar to the Lightspeed, it is scalable in terms of difficulty. It doesn't have like a one through something number that I'm aware of, uh, but it's definitely a longer course than the little uh, Perplexus Go puzzles, but still overall on the shorter side, I would say. There are no checkpoints, so that definitely does add to a little bit of the difficulty. But like I said, it's scalable in terms of, you know, if you've got the speed set up to max, well, then that's definitely challenging, especially if you say that you try to complete it without being able to stop it from spinning and you gotta work your way through on max speed without stopping it. You know, that's a challenge that you could set for yourself that all of a sudden makes this very hard versus just going through it like this, spinning it manually. Uh, so I think that scalability, you know, at its maximum, this can be really difficult among the hardest perplexuses, but I didn't think it was fair to rank it that way because uh, it can also be a lot easier than that. And the overall course I don't think is, is too, too challenging, which is why it's 14. At number 13, we have the Perplexus Rookie slash Rebel. This is one of the classic Perplexuses, and it is one through 70 with no checkpoints. And so I think that no checkpoints definitely has to be a factor to consider when thinking about the difficulty of this puzzle. However, overall, despite there being no checkpoints for the one through 70, I do think it lives up to its original name of Rookie quite well. Much like the tiny Perplexus Go Balls, this is very much a good introductory Perplexus puzzle and challenge. Uh, there's no overly difficult obstacles, one wall sections, crazy maneuvers that you really have to make on this. You can see the whole course very well and easily. Uh, this is my favorite Perplexus to speed run. And so even though, like I said, there's no checkpoints, I think because it really serves as an introduction to a lot of obstacles and it has high walls and is pretty easy to maneuver all the way through, uh, that's why it's still on the easier side. Coming in at number 12 is the Perplexus Cubot. And this is the one of the ones that I think might be a little controversial because I've actually got it somewhat high up on this list. It's around the midway point. Now this is one through 33 with no checkpoints, so a lot shorter than the Rookie, but I think it offers some more challenging obstacles than the Rookie does. There's just some parts that are hard to navigate. It's not quite as easy to follow as the Rookie is. And uh, there's definitely some places where your line of sight is pretty obstructed. That makes it just all the more difficult to navigate through. There's some swinging sections and some one wall sections that definitely offer a challenge. So this was another one that I really struggled to uh, rank because like the Rookie, I've just played so much, I've mastered it, I could do it in my sleep. Not so much the case for this and I didn't want to let my own bias and ability to complete like the, the Rookie uh, overly influence where I rank some of the ones that I was less familiar with but I definitely feel like this still holds up as pretty challenging, actually. Moving into the top half of the list now at number 11, we have the Perplexus Warp. This is another borderline classic Perplexus. It's definitely quite a bit older these days, and it's a Perplexus that I actually have a lot of fun with. It is also technically one through 70, but it has uh, 
three checkpoints. So uh, similar in length to the Rookie, I actually think it's a little bit shorter. There's not as much course here. It's a little bit deceiving. And it's got three checkpoints. So why might you ask, is it higher than like the Rookie and the Cubot then with those three checkpoints? You'd think it would be easy. And on one hand, yes, actually, I do think it's kind of easy. On the other hand, this is the first Perplexus that really introduced the Cascading Cups style obstacle, and that can be pretty hard to nail down. There's some other drop sections on here that pose a little bit of a challenge as well, and this kind of stairs section that goes like through the middle, it's not even a stairs as much as it's like a spiked section, I also find challenging. So there's some challenging bits packed into here, even with those three checkpoints, it's enough that this can frustrate you, and uh, I think, you know, certainly on an individual level, there's obstacles here that vastly outstrip the difficulty of anything in the rookie. And that's enough to put it above it, even with the three checkpoints. At number 10, we have the Perplexus Twist, another classic Perplexus. And the first to introduce any sort of gimmick, this one, as the name suggests, twists around and is actually a lot of fun. Now, I used to think this was a pretty challenging Perplexus more challenging than even the original, I would say. It is one through 30, but don't let that deceive you. It's really actually quite a bit longer than that. It's much more similar in size to the original slash beast or the rookie slash rebel. So it's longer than the one through 30 suggests. And uh, I think if you are trying to go from start to finish without using checkpoints, without falling off the track, then this is definitely more challenging than the original. But uh, by my count, there are uh, nine, I believe, uh, eight for sure, possibly nine checkpoints on this. I guess nine if you count the start and then eight checkpoints along the way. So that is a lot of checkpoints, more so than any other perplexus. Uh, there are eight valid checkpoints on this puzzle, which means uh, you fall off. There's gonna be a place for you to pick up pretty soon on. So even though there are some definitely some challenging obstacles in here. Uh, you don't have to string too many of them together without having a checkpoint in between them. And since I am factoring checkpoints into this video, I think that does ultimately make this considerably easier. I might consider doing a second ranking where I do this without factoring in checkpoints and say, if you're trying to go from start to finish without falling off, then what's the most difficult? That would definitely bump this one up in the rankings. But because of those eight checkpoints, yeah, that really removes a lot of the difficulty level because you just don't have to get through too many hard obstacles consecutively. And so it ends up falling to number 10. At number nine, we've got the classic, discolored, faded, very old Perplexus original, also known as the beast these days. Uh, this definitely is a beast of a Perplexus and it's a whole lot of fun. Like I said, originally I had the twist as more difficult than this. Ooh, that was noisy. But I have changed my mind. This is one through 100 and it has three checkpoints. And uh, the three checkpoints definitely do help reduce difficulty a little bit here. Uh, but there are some good solid obstacles and I have to keep that in mind because again, much like the rookie, I've just mastered this one. I can largely do it in my sleep with no problems whatsoever. But when I think back to when I was playing through it the first time and some of the spots where I got stuck, there are some challenging spots, especially this evil, evil drop section right at the end of checkpoint two before checkpoint three. If you really want to do this legit, you got to get all the way there and then you got a high chance of falling off. Definitely some, some evil obstacle placement on this one. And so, yeah, I think this is a little bit more of a challenge than it might feel to me. And I tried to balance that out because though I do know this perplexes like the back of my hand, back in the day when I first played it, I struggled in some parts and being the quintessential classic perplexus, being a little bit longer, there's definitely some good obstacles in this one. At number eight, I have the perplexus go Harry Potter Golden Snitch. Now, to me, this is where the perplexuses start to get genuinely challenging. If you want a good challenge, you know, something like the other perplexus go sets, the, the rookie, the original, really good introductions. They'll be fun, they have some challenge. This is where it starts to become definitely a challenge even for experienced players, in my opinion. And so do not be deceived by the looks on this one because though it is just one through 30, like the other perplexus goes, uh, it is a big step up in terms of difficulty. 
Uh, there are no checkpoints. There are some really clever obstacles. The way the stair section is used in here, something like eight times, spins around. There's some drop, set, drop sections. There's a, a snake section through here. Uh, even this, what I call the roller coaster section offers a good challenge. There's some other drops throughout. There's just there's just a lot of challenging obstacles here and they just keep coming at you. It's, there's a lot that's packed into a small space with this one with moving parts and all the likes of that. And so that definitely makes this much more challenging than you would maybe expect it to be just at the outset when you look at it. I think they do a really good job at packing in a whole bunch of references. I, I absolutely love this Perplexus. But yeah, it is more than meets the eye with this one with the no checkpoints and just throwing obstacle after obstacle at you. Definitely one of the more challenging perplexuses in my opinion. So coming in at number seven here is the world's smallest perplexus original. Now this is a very faithful adaptation or remaking of the original. It features the exact same number of obstacles, one through a hundred, three checkpoints. It is essentially a carbon copy of the original, just shrunk down in size. And for those of you who watch my videos, you know what that means. That means a little bit more friction with the ball. It doesn't navigate along the course quite as smoothly. You gotta make some more forceful jerky movements. And overall, just by shrinking it down, it does make it more challenging. And so despite it being the same in every other fashion, uh, being just that smaller size, is enough to make it decidedly more difficult than the original itself. And that is why the nice little perplexus that you can hold in the palm of your hand, the world's smallest perplexus original, it's a little bit harder at number seven. Coming in at number six, well, that would be the world's smallest perplexus twist, the other palm of your hand perplexus and uh, very much like the twist. I would say it's one through 30, but this one actually, I think more aptly labels it as one through 60, which is really what I think the original twist is. So if there was any improvements on this, uh, that would be it. For those of you who have watched my comparison video between the original twist and the smallest twist, you would know I really don't like this guy, uh, though it is similar in a lot of ways with the same length of course, generally speaking, the same number of checkpoints and all that. Uh, this one does not translate so faithfully to the smaller size like the original does. And so you might be asking, well, why is it listed as more difficult when I had the Perplexus original as more difficult than the Perplexus twist? Well, that would be because uh, I think that it's more than just the shrinking in size that makes this more challenging. Some of the obstacles are reworked generally to make them easier, funnily enough. But uh, nevertheless, there's a lot of parts on here, as I've said in my review and stuff, that feel highly dependent on luck. There's no amount of skill or mastery that is gonna make you be able to complete it any easier. And that's really hard. That's really difficult when you have that. You know, I've taken into account the fact that there might be some really challenging obstacles in other perplexuses that with enough time and practice, you can eventually get them every time or ace it almost every time. I don't think that's the case with this guy. And so even though he's actually a bit of a dumbed down version of the original twist, because of just the sheer dumb luck that you need to get through some parts of this, because the twists don't all meet up nicely and that can make for some really uh, awkward jumps from one section of the track to the other, I genuinely think that this is more challenging and not in a good or fun way either. It is definitely more challenging than the world's smallest original the uh, big version of the twist, the big version of the beast slash original as well. Uh, it deserves to be at number six, but not for the best of reasons. So now rounding out our top five, we have the Rubik's Perplexus three by three fusion. Now this is kind of a fun perplexus, kind of an annoying perplexus. It doesn't really have any difficult obstacles. Uh, certainly nothing that approaches anywhere close to the difficulty of some of the previous perplexuses that we've just gone through, but it is one to 225 of making it officially the longest perplexus by obstacle count. I do think that uh, the portal and Death Star are actually a little bit longer in terms of course, but technically this is the longest perplexus. And on top of all that, it has poor visibility, especially through the middle sections and no checkpoints. And so though there's not really any particularly challenging obstacles in here, because it can be 
pretty hard to figure out where you're going and you can just kind of flying off the track because the track doesn't connect if you haven't spun it up right. And because it's 225 obstacles with no checkpoints, there's just so many places for you to fall off. I mean, even if it's relatively easy, there's just so much time for you to make a mistake before you get to the end. Uh, and they do put a few kind of mean obstacles just right before the very end to try and get you to, which is really, really nice of them. Is it not to you get to 224 and you drop in and you mess it up and you go, oh, well, that's great. Um, I mean, it's fun in some ways, but when you have no checkpoints, that's really mean. And so it really is the no checkpoints that does it for this one because it's the sum of all the parts here ends up with something that is reasonably challenging and uh, kind of similar to the world's smallest perplexus twist, not necessarily in the best of ways. Coming in at number four, we have the Perplexus Portal, the latest, the greatest, and my favorite. This is another one that I think is gonna be somewhat controversial. I know there are some of you who are adamant that this is the hardest Perplexus. It is one through 150, making it the second longest and longer than both the Death Star and the Epic. And it only features three checkpoints similar to the original, unlike the Epic that has four, if you count the start. And so, well, you know what? You would think that that would make this the most difficult, I agree. But I actually think this is incredibly balanced. There are some challenging obstacles, but there are no insanely frustrating obstacles like there are on the Epic and the Death Star. And so I think that's enough. I mean, this is a great challenge. If, if you wanted to talk about balance on a perplexus, the reason it's my favorite is because I think this is so well balanced. Yes, you've got that really innovative tube section that definitely offers a challenge. Uh, 133, I believe it is, you've got this weird like concoction of butterfly sections almost that uh, definitely is challenging. You've got something in section one, there's a dr double drop section here. Let me find it. There you are, double drop section right there, challenging. So there's some obstacles that are challenging in their own right, but a lot of it just feels like it flows really nicely. And, and I don't think that the portal gimmick, which I really do like, by the way, I really like the portal gimmick. Uh, I never found it in of itself all that difficult. Uh, maybe you did, but uh, I felt like you just had to know what you were doing and those were not places where you were particularly prone to falling off. It created some really unique interactions with the course, made for some really fun obstacles, but none of the portal mechanics themselves felt too, too challenging to me. And so the result is uh, that this ends up coming in at number four. Like I said, that might be a controversial take, I know, but I am adamant that that is where it is for me. At number three, the bronze medal for difficulty, voila the Perplexus Epic. Not what you were expecting, I know. Like I said, I think this actually, my whole top five, might be a little controversial. That's why I'd love to hear your opinions. But the Perplexus Epic is one through 125. It's got four checkpoints if you count the start and then practices A through C. So there's a little bit more forgiveness than the portal, but whew, there are some challenging obstacles. There is what is, in my opinion, oh, either the hardest or the second hardest obstacle in all of Perplexus with this vexingly frustrating stair section uh, just at the beginning of practice B. There are also some really difficult parts along practice C on your way to the end. An innovative zip line and gondola section. And I mean, even just right from the start with the seesaw, you've got a challenge from the moment you start out with this one. And so overall, though there's a few more checkpoints and it's a little shorter, uh, this is quintessential perplexus in terms of difficulty. There are a lot of frustrating obstacles and uh, they're spaced out in a way that, you know, you get through one and then you go a long ways and then you hit another really hard one and, and it's right before the next practice point. And so, definitely makes it a little more challenging, the spacing and pacing of difficult obstacles here. Uh, for a challenge, for to live up to the epic name, it's really well done, but I definitely think that this is a difficult perplexus, much more so than the portal, and individually it has a lot of obstacles that are more frustrating and challenging. So what is gonna be my number two? Well, the answer to that is, the two by two Rubik's Perplexus Hybrid. Now, this is the one that I'm not overly sure about. I think it's deserving of two. It's definitely deserving of top five, 
but it's the one, it's one I've only beaten once just recently. I haven't really played through a ton. I did play through it for this video again, um, but not all the way. And so I haven't learned the ins and outs of this. I might soften my stance a little bit, but this is one through 100 with no checkpoints, a functioning Rubik's cube, uh, much more in the way of unique and challenging obstacles than the three by three. Uh, so there's definitely more difficulty here. Lining up the course can be a challenge. No checkpoints, like I said. And the spinning of the cube sometimes can be quite sticky and annoying. And that adds another dimension that makes this even harder because you're trying to rotate. You gotta rotate it three times and then turn it and then rotate it again without the marble falling off. Uh, and it's a small marble or a smaller marble on you know some pretty thin track at some points. And so overall, I think this is very, very challenging, very frustrating. One of the hardest perplexuses by far. And uh, the no checkpoints is really the killer for me because you're constantly manipulating and moving this around. There's very little margin for error while you're doing so. And if you do fall off, you gotta start all over again. So uh, one through 100, it's a good length. It's definitely way more challenging than the three by three fusion, even though it's technically only half of the length. Uh, just way more challenging, way more creative in terms of what's going on here. And so yeah, for me, at least as it stands right now, this is the second hardest. I even toyed with putting it as the hardest, but I thought, mm, I don't know that I can do that. It is a very hard challenge nonetheless. I think it deserves the second spot. So then, what is definitively, objectively, the most difficultest, hardest perplexus there is? Well, that, my good friends, would be the perplexus Death Star. I have always felt this insanely challenging. It took me years to complete. It is perplexus epic in scope. It is perplexus epic in terms of vexingly hard obstacles. It takes that length, one through 115, so slightly shorter, one through 115. And uh, it says here, you only get one checkpoint plus the start. One, not the, the, the three that you get with the epic. I know I'm being inconsistent whether I count the start or not, but let's ignore that. Three with the epic, two with the portal, no. You only get one here. This is full of drop sections. You have a magnet X-wing that is kind of really difficult to figure out until you know what to do with it. Uh, and then, yeah, like did I mention drop sections after drop sections after drop sections? Uh, right after the first checkpoint here at like 58 or 60 or something like that, there is what might be the hardest obstacle of any perplexus. It's a double drop section. Uh, it's infuriatingly difficult. Uh, I, I almost quit and never finished this one because of it. And that's just to start off the second half of the maze. Then you gotta just, it just keeps coming and coming and coming at you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. To me, this is far and away the hardest. I, I think it's, it's much more difficult than the Epic and the Portal. And uh, you, know, you can say what you want about the two by two Rubik's. Uh, I mean, this definitely outstrips that as well. This is a mega epic experience. It deserves the epic name in many ways. You know, it's, it's a Death Star, but it's epic as well. Uh, not to mention there's some distortion from the glass. That's not a weakness. That's, that's, uh, that's a feature, not a bug. Uh, but that distortion just adds the difficulty, the grayscale. Um, there's a lot that makes this very challenging. And uh, yeah, just, just so many drops, so many drop sections, then they can be hard to control, hard to master. Um, my gut says this is the hardest, having played all the perplexuses over many years. I still shudder when I think of the Death Star. If you were to just ask me off the cuff the hardest perplexus, I would say Death Star 10 times out of 10. And so I'm trusting my gut even after playing through all of them and sticking with the fact that this is indeed the most challenging perplexus. So there you have it, my totally objective and 100% correct ranking of all 23 perplexuses from the easiest to the hardest. Like I said, let me know what you think of this ranking in the comment section down below, how you would rank them. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end, showing your support. I know you guys have really enjoyed that first ranking video, like I said, and so I'm super happy to be making this one as well. It was a lot of fun to do. I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as the last. I am gonna leave this video here though. If you liked it, please do leave a like down below. It is a great way for you to show your support. Subscribe for more Perplexes content. My YouTube 
channel is the place to go on YouTube if you want anything and everything Perplexus related. I have so much Perplexus content on my channel. I've covered all the Perplexuses that have been made. So if that does interest you, if you want more Perplexus content, subscribe, check out my older videos, and uh, stay tuned for new Perplexus videos coming in the future. I've got a lot of ideas up my sleeve, even though I've done reviews and walkthroughs for most of them now. Uh, there's going to be plenty more Perplexus content in the future, so do not worry about that. Subscribe instead so you don't miss it. And yeah, with all that said, thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this format, everything, and I'll see you all in the next one.